Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Choosing the right processor for your next computer build was never an easy task. Are you mostly a gamer looking for most FPS or do you also care about productivity? Luckily, as of recently and thanks to AMD, you can get both. Zen 3 brought exceptional gains in both performance and efficiency over the previous generation of processors and with no need to upgrade from existing AM4 motherboards, it was the smart choice for many. Deviating slightly from our usual top-of-the-line testing, today we checked out Ryzen 5 5600. This mid-range 6-core processor was launched in April 2022 and for 199 USD it was positioned against Intel's i5 12400F, acting as the great all-rounder. Manufactured on TSMC's 7nm node, the processor is clocked at 3.5GHz base and out of the box it will boost up to 4.4GHz. Despite being the non-X CPU, it is fully unlocked and can be overclocked. Well, slightly. CPU supports PCIe Gen 4 and DDR4 memory of up to 3200 MHz and thanks to the incredible power efficiency of Zen 3 processors, the 5600 has a TDP of just 65 watts. For today's testing, I'm using an ASRock X570 Extreme 4 motherboard with 32 gigs of Corsair's Vengeance DDR4 memory. Cooling is handled by Corsair H150i and powering the test bench is now vintage AX860i. As always, RTX 3080 was used to generate bottlenecks, well at least in 1080p gaming. Let's start with Cinebench R23, where the 5600 already shows great results. At stock speed, multi-thread score of 10751 is more than double of what the legendary Intel i7-990X pushed. And yes, don't worry, I'm going to test more 6-core CPUs soon, so that the comparison is fair and makes more sense. The single thread score of 1450 points is the fastest I've ever recorded in my testing, making both my 3900X and the 10th gen 10900X slower by 12%. Wow. Overclocking the 5600 was not very exciting and the most my CPU could achieve was 4.65 GHz. This resulted in roughly 4% performance gain. 7-Zip's compression and decompression test is a quick way to evaluate your processor's capability and here, the 5600 achieved respectable scores considering its mid-range market position. Next, I run Blender's car demo file. At stock speed, the 5600 took 3 minutes and 46 seconds to complete the render. Applying the mild overclock reduced the time by 7%. My trusty 3900X is still leading this graph, but with double the core count, that's a mood point. Last productivity test was the fast 1080p30 preset of Handbrake. For this test, I'm simply using one of my video files which is 10GB in size. The 5600 took 12 minutes and 22 seconds at stock speed, great result. All things considered, I was pleasantly surprised how capable the 5600 was across all of the tests, but let's see how it does in games. All of the game testing was done at 1080p and by using built-in game benchmarks just to keep the results as consistent as possible. First game tested was F1 2018 at ultra high settings. The 5600 goes straight for kill with 259 FPS on average, beating the Cascade Lake i9 processor by 4%. Both CPUs are comparable in the 1% low average, however, the 5600 further improves the averages when overclocked. Wow! This really took me by surprise. 2016 Deus Ex Mankind put slightly more weight on those CPU cores, but the 5600 remains very efficient with peak power consumption of just around 56 watts. All of this whilst delivering staggering 151 FPS on average at stock speeds. That is 16% faster over the 10900X and a similar story with 1% lows. Up next, we test Dirt Rally, and I know it's an older title, but I always love returning to this game. With ultra settings and 2 times MSAA enabled, the results are again in favour for our mid-range Ryzen CPU. This time, it was under 5% faster at stock speed, but look at the overclocked result. 
that's a very healthy gain and worth the extra 10 watts it's consuming. Time for some Forza Horizon 4. Whilst the 202 FPS average was marginally better with the 5600, the 1% lows remain in favour of the much older 10900X. Overclocking pushed the power consumption up by 15%, but the gains were not worth it in this game. The domination of Ryzen 5 5600 continues in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I can't believe how fast the CPU is for games and the average of 190 FPS puts it firmly in front of the 10900X. These results really make me want to test more 6-core parts and more CPUs in general. A CPU testing classic, Rainbow Six Siege at very high settings. Judging by the results, this game likes more cores, still, the 435 FPS average of the 5600 is only 2% slower than what the 10-core i9 pushed. The 1% lows are significantly better with the 10900X2, but at above 250 FPS, does one even care? The newest game in my CPU benchmarking suite is Far Cry 6. The 5600 achieved 116 FPS on average at stock speed and overclocking did very little and was not worth the extra power in my humble opinion. The 10900X was slower by 13% in this title. Last game tested was of course Cyberpunk 2077. Are you guys all excited for the upcoming Phantom Liberty expansion? Let me know in the comments down below. High settings with no DLSS so 137 FPS on average at stock speed, and overclocking provided a very nice increase to 1% lows. Overall though, the 10900X remains on the top, but only just. Right then folks, there you have it. In summary, Ryzen 5 5600 really delivered, and even surpassed my expectations for an inexpensive mid-range CPU. Zen 3 is awesome, no matter how you look at it. What AMD has done here is nothing short of excellent. The Ryzen 5 5600 tested today can be had for as little as £110 or 140 USD, brand new. And with the new AM4 platform slowly growing in its popularity, the abundance of AM4 parts and DDR4 memory on the second-hand market really makes Zen 3 a very affordable platform that will fit all budgets. Being so impressed by the CPU, I'm going to use it in a budget build video, make sure you're subscribed for that, hopefully out in few weeks time. Guys, what do you think of the CPU? Did you recently upgrade to Zen 3 or are you only planning to do so? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one.